Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So in the previous video, I showed you guys my Delve League Start SSF character. Um, I can't go as in detail with this other build starter that I'm going to link for you guys, but it is going to be the Delve League Start Solo Self Found Templar Dominating Blow plus Herald of Purity inspired by none other, pff, none other than Ziggy D because he was smoiting minions in a very lovely fashion, even though we're not going to use Smite. So, let's go ahead and open up this, and I want to show you guys what we've got. Now, just like before, I would like to put a disclaimer. Uh, this is pretty much my first time using Path of Building. We're not using actual damage numerics. This is simply a skill tree outline, and I'm going to just help you guys out with different ways to scale it. And as I play the build, I can update you guys with what I'm doing. I don't know how many updates I'll be making because this is probably not my League Starter. I do believe I'll be using my Caustic Arrow League Starter character. But if you're interested in a hybrid version of a summoner and a melee character, this is going to be probably a really awesome build for you. So let's go ahead and start. So we're going to be playing as Guardian. Unlike the previous build that I was showing you guys, I would pretty much only recommend this as a Guardian and here's why. By playing Guardian, you gain access to Radiant Crusade. Radiant Crusade states, you and allies affected by aura skills deal 20% increased damage and 10% more damage while you have at least one nearby ally. As a summoner, you're going to have allies all the time. Herald of Purity has a 40% increased buff effect, which is gonna be one of your main skills. It's a new Herald that adds flat physical damage. Summon Sentinels of Purity have 50% increased area of effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that up really fast. Herald of Purity, PoE. Oh, actually, let me just do this. Can someone link me the Faded Chober Chopper again? So, the new, where is it at? Herald of Purity is located right here, if you guys are curious. Now, if you notice, Herald of Purity actually gives you flat physical, which means it's a face breaker option. So you can actually do a hybrid build of a face breaker summoner, and it's gonna be okay, and we're gonna explain why. The next skill we're gonna use in this build is the reworked Dominating Blow. Dominating Blow no longer lags your computer. Instead, it has a cap on what it can summon. It's very important to note that Dominating Blow summons Sentinels of Dominance and Herald of Purity summons Sentinels of Purity. One big thing that these skills both have that we don't really ever see is not only do you generate them when you kill with them, but there is a 20% chance to summon a Sentinel of Purity when you hit a unique enemy. What this means is you're gonna feel less pressure to always go zoom, 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 and you can feel a bit more relaxed because you can actually build up minions at the boss fight. Respectively, Dominating Blow has a 10% chance to summon it. Now, there is one more skill we're gonna be using called Summon Holy Relic. It is a new skill. Um, summons a Holy Relic that stays close to you. When you hit an enemy with an attack, the Holy Relic triggers a Nova spell that deals physical damage to enemies and grants life regeneration to allies. This life regeneration has significantly higher values when applied to minions. The Relic's Nova spell has a very short cooldown. So, let's go ahead and close out of this and start talking about the build progression. Let's start with 1 to 20. So, starting from 1 to 20, Templar has had a pretty significant rework to areas around their passive tree, so let's take a look. You've got increased damage, increased damage, minion damage and attack, or yeah, sorry, minion damage and regular damage. Um, we're gonna pick up retribution and immediately go into life. Now this character can create or can be played as CI, but since this is a league starter, we'll be making a tanky life base character. We're gonna go ahead and move up into these new minion clusters or reworked, Increase minion damage, minion damage, minion attack speed, minion damage, minion attack speed, and a really big one, increases and reductions to minion attack speed also affect you. This is gonna be crucial for playing a hybrid that actually scales off of minions, because otherwise you're splitting yourself too much and it's not really gonna work. I've opted out to not pick the strong accuracy rating because our ascendancy gives us a ton of accuracy and the new nodes are filled with accuracy. So let's move across. I'm going to go ahead and pump it to 21 to 40. You can see that we are scaling through Purity of Flesh. 
I have chosen to not pick up Sovereignty or the Reservation, and the reason why is, with the new Herald, if you're trying to scale the minions, you're going to be linking your Herald, which means you're going to be reserving more mana. Previously as a summoner, I'm not really used to doing that, usually we just try to stack as many auras as we can, but since we're primarily physical, the only aura I really think I'm going to run is Hatred. So I decided not to pick up Reservation because it's literally so easy to pick up if you want it, and I just don't know yet because I have to play it to see how the Herald of Purity is going to interact and what supports it's going to need. So we skipped it and moved down to the juiciest minion cluster in the entire game, one of the few things that has three notables in it. So. Let's start. Minions have 4% increased attack speed. Minions have 4... Oh, actually. Okay. Minions have 4% increased attack speed. Minions have 4% increased attack speed. Guess what? This works for you too. Redemption. 12% increased damage. Minions have 10% movement speed. Minions have 5% attack speed and additional accuracy. Furthermore, minion damage and accuracy. Spiritual aid gives you global accuracy, which doesn't really matter for us. Minions have increased damage, and another big one. Increases and reductions to minion damage also affect you. What this means is there is an item or a weapon in the game called Scourge. This literally puts the Scourge effect on the passive tree. So, let's go ahead and keep looking. The next one is Righteous Army. Righteous Army is going to give 20% maximum life to minions, 1% life regen to you, Minions deal increased damage and life regen. If you want additional damage clusters, feel free to pick them up. In my tree, I may have these selected. You don't have to have them. Uh, I decided to move down. Um, I'm skipping two-point jewels. Obviously, you pick up jewels whenever you feel they're necessary. If you don't have the jewel, don't spec into the socket. We're going into devotion. Really strong uh, life clusters here. Scrolling down, you have the option of tireless. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pump the next part, but before I do... Um, we're going to go ahead and get Radiant Crusade, which is immediately going to start scaling our Herald of Purity, which we want to have on as soon as we can. So, let's go ahead and pump to 41 to 60. I decided to pick up Tireless. The reason why I have Tireless is we're not really getting much mana regen from the stream. Your Dominating Blow, Dominating Blow's mana cost has been halved. It used to be 16 mana cost per second. Now it's actually not per second, per hit. Now it's 8. So, the interesting thing with Tireless is this will reduce that even more. So this is a really nice option to get. I decided to move across and go towards Scion, and the reason why is we're gonna want skill effect duration, especially if you're leveling with the skill. Since we're not gonna have crazy fast clear speed at the beginning and you know just how early game works, you are gonna want more skill effect duration. Now, I'm not sure if we're gonna need super skill effect duration. In the build, we don't go to exceptional performance. However, you can very easily modify the build to actually get it, and you'll see why shortly. So, let's go ahead and pump down the next part of the tree, which is 61 to 80. You can see from here, I picked up Precision, and I picked up Expertise, and I believe I got RT earlier. The reasoning for Resolute Technique with Precision, I know we have Accuracy on our tree, but remember, we're not trying to get Accuracy. It's just happening because that's how the tree works. So, what Precision actually does is it gives us attack and cast speed. Attack speed is very good because that's how you proc additional minions when you're fighting unique monsters. And Precision also gives you 20 dexterity. Not sure if you realize this, Templars don't have any dex. They're not really good at wearing socks and they don't run very fast. So with a combination of Precision and Expertise, we get 50 dexterity, which will really help with running Hatred if that's what you're trying to run, which I would probably assume because it's a huge multiplier. So. Uh, moving on, I went ahead and went over here to grab Grave Pact. Um, this is 15 minion damage for attack speed for attack speed, 20% increased damage, and then minion leech. I think this is our only source of minion leech, so I'd probably say it's pretty important to get. Even though we will have really good regeneration for our minions with like Summon Holy Relic and actually this new node that I'm going to show you right now. Um, if you've hit an enemy recently, you and nearby allies regenerate 3% life per second. It also gives 100% minion accuracy. Your minions now intimidate targets, which makes them take 10% increased attack damage. So you get the mobs take 10% increase, you deal 10% more. So that's really good to see like the way that synergy works. Also, one important thing to note is the following. Summoned Sentinels use Crusade Slam. Summoned Sentinels of Purity have increased area of effect. So this is for Sentinels of Purity, and this is for General Sentinels. 
On top of that, you get 10% increased area of effect for each summoned Sentinel of Purity. Now, the big thing to, to really question mark is that I'm pretty sure that this area of effect only works to you and I don't know how active your purities are going to be up because we don't know how strong they are compared to the dominating blow. But one nice thing is this would scale your melee splash on dominating blow which will let you hit a much larger area. I also want to address a simple question that people on the live stream are asking. They're asking why I'm getting minion leech and that it's a noob trap. Let's explain why you get minion leech. It's one point for 0.6% of damage leached as life. Leech stacks with life regeneration. So this literally, for one point, allows your minions to scale their damage via leech. This is really good when there's ignites, when there's chaos damage on the floor, when they have a bleed on them, reflect. In general, it's one point for super sustain. If you really don't want it, I promise it's super easy. You just do that. So. Let's go ahead and move on to the next part of the build. You can see we are moving down to get more life. I'm personally playing hardcore. I'm playing solo self-found. I like my builds to be tanky. The more tanky they are, the easier it is for me to progress through the game. Uh, and of course, like I always say, damage you can always find. You know, if I feel I'm too tanky, you pull out the damage or you pull out the tankiness, you get damage. Unfortunately, if you get too much damage and you die, you can't pull out the damage because you're in standard league. So, um, Let's go ahead and build the next part of the tree, 81 to 100. You can see here I have moved down, I acquired Bloodless and Life. Along with up here, we've got Born to Fight, simply moving in for all of the additional life and life regeneration. Since we're playing a summoner, and I don't really know how much damage I'm going to be, um, essentially I, I want to stack life regen. I'm a big fan of life regen. Most of my builds I play don't run on leech unless they need them, and instead they stack life regen. From here, we're looking at about 13% life regen on the tree, if you include Unwavering Crusade. If not, it's like 11%. It's really strong. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next part of the build. I decided to pick up Bastion of Hope. The reason for Bastion of Hope is it gives us a steroid to block. Um, block is one of the best mechanics in the game, even if it's been nerfed. Essentially, what block means is, if you block, you don't take damage. If you've blocked in the past 10 seconds, which is gonna be all the time because you're melee, you and nearby allies cannot be stunned. So you make your minion stun immune and you make yourself stun immune. By attacking, which you'll be doing all the time, you get a flat 10% block. That's really good. If you cast a spell, you get spell block. Uh, I don't know if the Holy Relic is tagged as a spell. If it is tagged as a spell, that synergizes even better with Bastion of Hope. For Uber Lab, you have many options. You can choose to go Harmony of Purpose, Harmony of Purpose would essentially allow you to conduit endurance charges to your minions. Uh, and just in general, it's nice to have. Furthermore, you have Radiant Faith. I don't really see much use in this right now unless you want to min-max and do like a low life setup, but there's never anything wrong with it. And then there's Time of Need, which I'll most likely be getting because it is essentially another life regen buff that kicks in randomly, which I know some people really are put off by this, and I'm going to be super honest with you. Just don't pick it up. There's many other options. You've got two more right here. So I really like that. You can't share charges with minions. Okay, so then don't don't get debated by me. According to what people say, this doesn't work with the minions, so it's okay. However, we will be trying out the little conduit monkeys, or the little monkeys specters, because we can probably have specters, and I believe those can go ahead and, you know, like essentially like work it out. But that's for another time. Okay. So allies are, allies are everyone that's allied. Party members do not include minions. My apologies. Let's go ahead and move on to the 101 to 120 where we're pretty much filling in um, filler nodes. I decided to move across up here for a quick recovery. I also picked up a two socket jewel. You can see we're filling in our two socket jewels across the tree. You even have an option for a three socket jewel with life regen. <clears throat> and I decided to pick up Indomitable. The reason why we picked up Indomitable is because as a Guardian, we're scaling a ton of armor. We're at like 180% armor, uh, which is really nice. The other benefit to Indomitable is that it is you take 20% reduced extra damage from critical strikes. This is really misleading in a good way because armor, 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 reduced crit damage. That means spell damage too. So even though this gives you armor, it's actually mitigating spells. So I really personally like it. That pretty much sums up the character. There's a lot of room for you to play between. So let's move into the next part where the skills are. So I'm gonna repeat here. Nothing on here, like I don't, uh, 
don't listen to this, okay? Just listen to what I'm telling you because I'm not, I'm not building the character to show you damage. I'm just giving you guys a template and a layout. So, I decided to socket an Ice Crash. Ice Crash is basically the same mana cost as a new Dominating Blow, and we're gonna talk about some links that would potentially be good. Now, this is not min-maxed. I don't know if these are the best. As I've explained before, I need to personally play it, but I wanna get you guys started on the right track. So, with your Dominating Blow, Melee Physical would work really well. It's gonna scale for you. It's gonna scale for your minions. Maim is another nice, <clears throat> another nice one. I don't know if I wanna restrict Maim only to maybe my Herald instead, because Maim is another like debuff that they can apply, which means you can make other minions even stronger, like a pseudo seven link. Either way, it's really good. Uh, minion damage and minion speed, also really, really, really strong. Remember that you have a node over here. Oh, that's not the right tree, whoops. You have a node over here that says increase to minion damage also affects you. I would assume that works for support gems. I don't know if it actually doesn't work. It may not actually work to confirm because it is a support gem. So let's not get debated by it. Remember, we can always move them across. People are gonna freak out. Let me tell you how easy it is. Okay, that's it. So moving on, minion speed is a really nice support gem because of the minion speed it offers. <clears throat> What minion speed does is it gives you the early gain movement speed that you don't have, essentially, that you can make up for through essence crafting later on. Other good links are things like increase duration and melee splash. Increased duration is really another quality of life buff. I don't really know how, how much we're going to need it. One other cool thing to note is that when you hit with the new uh, dominating blow, it applies a debuff. Because it applies a debuff, the target needs to die when it's on the debuff, right? So that's good. So since <clears throat> since um, you don't actually have to kill the target, they just need to be they just need to essentially be tagged. So here are a couple support gems you can kind of play around with. And then in terms of items, I don't really have any real gear on. The only thing I have on is to just essentially show you guys how tanky the character is going to be, just like the previous ones. So this character hits a total of 7,800 life. You can see we're at, I think, 10.3, I don't know where the life regen is, it's somewhere here. 10.3 or 11% life regen before counting the Guardian Ascendancy, before counting things like uh, Consecrated Ground as well. So, um, just to go over the gear, I don't even have a weapon on because this is set with Facebreaker. The reason why I decided to pull on Facebreaker is simply because it would scale very well with your Herald, and since you transfer minion damage and make it equal like global damage, it would scale your Facebreaker. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and move on with some other stuff. With Facebreaker, you can also have near 8,000 HP, which is pretty cool, right? So we get, uh, here's a shield with implicit life with a high life roll. Um, here's a 99 life roll helmet. Now this does not include a hybrid roll, I've got a Belly of the Beast with 38%, Face Breakers with no life. We've got the 81 Maximum Life Greaves, uh, 80 Life Pendant, 70 Life Ring, 70 Life Ring, and then we've got 40 Life with 82 Life, double, you know, basically a double uh, leather belt. And then I just simply have four jewels with 30 max life in them. And that pretty much summarizes the character. So anyway, I hope that you guys can uh, can mess around with this. I will for sure be playing this character. It's just not gonna be my first character because this is a really interesting type of character. For me, it feels really tanky. It's got a good mixture of essentially block just coming from Gu Guardian's one of my favorite ascendancies. So it's got a good mixture of basically sustain, staying inside. That could have sounded a little cap of pride. Anyway, let, let's just move on to the next part. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Uh, if you guys enjoyed yourselves, please, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. I do want to do a little uh, sellout thing and show you guys one thing that I do actually have a live streaming schedule set up now. Oops. That did not actually work. I do have a live streaming schedule set up, and if you're curious to see where it is, you can simply see the now live here. Uh, although tomorrow on Friday, I won't be starting at 9 o'clock in the morning. I got to take my cat to the vet, so I have to like change this. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.